Welcome to the Calmwell Matters. I'm Richard Nelson, Executive Director of CPC, and we have a very timely and important discussion today, race, cultural appropriations, and the biblical worldview, or I should say a biblical worldview. And I happen to be the minority in this group. Up to my left is good friend and pastor, Buddy Slaughter, pastors Means Avenue Baptist Church in Hopkinsville. To my right is Ron Hicks, pastor of Henderson Memorial Baptist Church, and he is a card caring member of the Cherokee Nation. But one thing I should say at the outset is that we identify, first of all, as followers of Jesus. Well, Bob, you're, both, you're, believe, you're both right. pastors. You lead congregations yes. in Hopkinsville. Um, we're all from different ethnicities, if you will. Yes. Um, but the commonality between us and the strongest one is that we're followers of Jesus. Yes. And I think that's where we begin the conversation. Uh, it's important to note uh, some of the some of the big news events of the last few weeks have prompted this discussion. I was talking to Ron Hicks over the phone the other day and uh, talked about the Cleveland Indians uh, changing their mascot. The Indians have been around since the 1800s, I believe it was, and just recently they announced that they changed their name to the Cleveland Guardians. <laughs> the Cleveland Guardians. Now, they spent uh, quite a bit of time searching for a new name. They put together a focus group. They did surveys and questionnaires. I and think they stopped short. <laughs> they, should have, they should have met just a little longer. <laughs> well, they should have because they found out that that name is trademarked. There's another sports team that is using it, so they are back mm -hmm. to square one. Well, and before that, the Washington Redskins is the Washington football team. Well, well so this is, this is really, and I'm trying to get my mind around this as a person that does public policy and politics, and I'm trying to do it from a careful uh, biblical worldview, sensitive to how other people think and process this. At the same time, I'm concerned about our history. Uh, are we whitewashing our history when we just say, well, that's cultural appropriation, the Indians should not be used, or the Atlanta Braves, or the Kansas City Chiefs in the NFL, or the Redskins. I think we can make a case that that's a little more racist as, as a name. But, um, buddy, I want to I want to start with you because off the air, off the set, we were talking about how to uh, one group might think of the issue differently than another group, another ethnicity yes. or race. So tell. So give us some yeah. insight into that. One of that is uh, the individuals that chose mascots or chose uh, uh, chose those mascots when they were chosen. Uh, the the people that were represented, maybe not intentionally by those mascots, uh, didn't have the opportunity to say whether or not that was offensive. And I think uh, that brings in conflict when you start removing them because are they removed because of the conflict or are they removed because uh, people are upset because they're removed because, hey, it's just a mascot, we didn't mean anything. Well, that's kind of insensitivity to the uh, the issue. And, and one example is in John 4, when, when Jesus goes to talk to the woman at the well, mm -hmm. uh, he sends the disciples away because, you know, she was a Samaritan, which she was a half breed. Mm -hmm. So they would not talk to her. And so when Jesus is talking to her, she says, why is it Why, that yeah. you, being a Jew, are talking to me, knowing that the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans? Christ was sensitive enough to know that the disciples could not be there when he had the conversation mm -hmm. with her. Mm -hmm. She immediately said, Why are you talking to me? You don't like me. Mm -hmm. But Christ did at least put himself in her presence. And once she voiced that, he never denied it, mm -hmm. but that was not his issue mm -hmm. with her. So I think, with whether it's a, a statue or a um, or a uh, mascot in the kingdom of God, that w as as we as we are servants in the kingdom, we have to be careful to not allow what culturally is a battle become a kingdom battle. Right, right. So um, you know that's. Mm -hmm. So I want to start at the at the um, let, let's go back because we jumped right into mascots and I want us to unpack and, and look at that a little deeper. But let's go to the issue of race first of all because we're at a time in our country's history when there are high racial tensions. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, there's animosity between certain races. 
we, we have dealt with institutional racism in this country, and I know that that touches nerves, but when you look at slavery, right. when you look at Jim Crow laws, right. when you look at redlining, that's right. institutional racism. Right. Buddy, right. by the way, I just learned the other day, or not too long ago, that the state of Oregon actually had it in their state constitution that um, uh, African Americans could not enter the state. Right. They saw that as a threat to the job, the workforce. Right. They didn't want black people competing for jobs there. That's institutional right, racism, right, right. and um, it's something I can't relate to. But uh, I want to talk about race from a biblical view, and I'm going to go to Ron, uh, because you, you do have Cherokee blood. Mm -hmm. You do identify as a Christian, but you yes. process these issues a little differently, too. You're a little more sensitive to how uh, race is used or how it's portrayed, different races are portrayed. Yes, yes. yeah. So how should mm -hmm. we think about it biblically? Well, it, a little backstory: When um, I, I used to see um, uh, who, who I consider to be Americans uh, of, of um, African Americans that would wear the the garb of the um, uh, oh <laughs> the uh, uh, the garb of the uh, you know the African um, well, the, the dress that African women would wear the headgear and all the rest of that. And I would think to myself, why? Why are they doing that? I, I mean, I didn't understand it. I, I didn't, I didn't think it was wrong, but I just didn't. I didn't have any understanding of why they did that. And, and then my father took us through and 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 tracked the unbroken lineage between, um, you know, himself all the way back to before the Dos Rolls, the forcible removal of Cherokees. And then I got this card from the Cherokee Nation that says I was a registered member of the Cherokee Nation. And I realized one, I didn't know my own history. But after I knew my own history, I wanted to identify with it as much as I could. And so I immediately recognized why the folks that I've been questioning before, why would you want to wear those things? I mean, you're American, you know, you're here. And, and, and it's, but, but then once I understood who I was and where I was from, I had that same desire to be able to connect to, to who, who it was that were my people, for lack, lack of a better word. So... So I, I think, you know, uh, and, and Buddy and I have talked about this many times, um, just having an open conversation with folks to be able to say, help me understand what, what is it that you're wearing, why is that important to you, and those sort of things, and just asking um, people, um, uh, you know, the scriptures tell us that we ought to consider everybody uh, better than ourselves, not that we should demean ourselves, but, but to be able to say, I want to I want to be all things to all people, so that by all means I might win some. Help me to understand who you are where you're from, what's important to you, why it's important, and 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 then to, to, to be able to be, you know, to show the love of Christ to, to, to those folks. Uh, we know biblically, too, that there are different ethnicities. It goes back to uh, uh, the Tower of Babel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The nation separated and people, you know, settled in different parts mm -hmm. of, the, of the world, and, and we have different tones of skin color. Mm -hmm. We have different other uh, facial traits. Um, but ultimately, we're made in the image of God. Yeah, isn't that a beautiful thing? And that's, thing. And that's yeah. a thing that mm -hmm. this is part, buddy, your skin color and my skin color are a little different, but we're both of equal value and mm -hmm. equal worth, made in the image of God, right. which gives you dignity, gives you inherent value. And that's something, as Christians, we need to recognize this in those of uh, different ethnicities. Well, if God is your father, if he, and God is your father, then what does that make you guys? Brothers, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, how, how do you treat your brother? How do you treat your sister? Right. So, we, we know that the racism is real. Uh, you know, if you look at some of the, the, the most horrific events of the 20th century, they were racially motivated, um, racial hatred. I think of the Holocaust. Yeah. It was a it was a racial ethnic. Cleansing, so-called, let's yeah. say, you missed the term, but I mean, it was the Nazi Germany that uh, sent six million Jews to their death. It was racial ethnic hatred. Uh, you look at what happened in Rwanda, the Rwanda genocide, 1994. Yeah. It was racial mm -hmm. hatred between two black groups, mm -hmm. by the yeah. way, the Hutus mm -hmm. and the Tutsis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at uh, uh, what the Japanese did to yeah. the Chinese mm -hmm. and the uh, the Koreans, uh, about six million. Uh, died at the hands of the Japanese. It was racial hatred. Mm -hmm. uh, and, mm -hmm. and we know that as people made into God, that we live in a fallen world and mm -hmm. we're prone to sin. We're prone to 
making ourselves superior mm -hmm. to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And this is where uh, it gets ugly. And we've seen racism uh, in other parts of the world. We've seen it here as well. But here's the antidote. The, the biblical worldview teaches that, uh, yes, we live in a fallen world. Even though we're made in the image of God, we live in a fallen world. We're prone to sin. But the good news is that Jesus came to save us yeah, from our yeah. sins. Yes. And he gives us a new identity. He frees us from the chains of sin, the chains of feeling superior one race over another. And then he further gives us ministries of reconciliation, mm -hmm. doesn't he? Yeah, we are ministers of reconciliation, absolutely. And the beautiful thing about it is, you know, the psalmist said, uh, um, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Give me a clean heart. The Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so the Lord says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a heart transplant. I'm going to give you a mind transplant. I created you in my image. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite scriptures is where it says that Jesus saw the crowds and had compassion on them as sheep without a shepherd. And so if we're made in, in the image of God and we're Christians, Christos, little Christ, we should see the crowds and have compassion on them, not judgment, not disdain, we should have compassion on our fellow human beings as sheep without a shepherd. And, um, and I mean, think about it, guys. How, does it take both hands for you to count the number of people that you could call at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, hey, I need you? I mean, do you, I, I don't know about you guys. I don't need both hands. Right. I don't need all the fingers right. on one hand. So when people just immediately say, this group, this ethnicity, this socioeconomic, whatever, the, uh, uh, these folks, I'm better than them, or they're lesser than I am. Why would we do that to ourselves? Yeah. And Christ and, and Christ gave us a command. He said, a new commandment mm, come on. that I give unto you. Mm -hmm. He says, love one another the way I have mm -hmm. loved you. Mm -hmm. Because see, under the law, he said, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Uh -huh. But here's the part. Here's the complication <laughs> right. with that. Some people don't love themselves. Some people don't even like but, themselves. But then right. he says, mm -hmm. a new command. I want you to love other people. The way that I have loved That's you, right. Christ hasn't been racist to anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Syro, uh, the, the Canaanite woman who came mm -hmm. to him in Matthew 15 and uh, begged, cried after him, and said, "My daughter has is demon possessed. Please, please help him." And then the disciple said, "Send her away. Uh, send her away. She's crying after mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Get rid of her. She's you know because she was an outcast." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Christ still, he said, "It's not fair to give. It's not meat to give." The children food to the dogs. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. that was a reference to Gentile, right. but her persistence. He wasn't trying to be derogatory. Mm -hmm. He was pulling her faith out of her, right. and he took the disciples to show them this is the new ministry. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when he leaves and goes into the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he's away from priests. He's mm -hmm. away from Pharisees, mm -hmm. Sadducees, and Pharisees. So that's important for for true believers. I think for you and I as pastors. Mm -hmm. We have to teach our congregations that racism is sin. Absolutely. And if the people, a person hates their brother, they won't see the kingdom of God. The truth is not in I mean, the so that's and that's mm -hmm. that's yeah. going to be tough that's, yeah. for some people to do. But uh, so, yeah. so buddy, let me take that a step further. And Ron, you come in here a little closer. So, <clears> so uh, to take it a step further, not only is racism a sin, but when we see brokenness and when we see pain and when we see unrighteousness. I believe we have an obligation to step in, to stand in the gap, and to yes. work for righteousness. Yes. And not everybody has an opportunity, yes. but we can do something. So I'm, I'm looking at 2 Corinthians 5, beginning in verse 17, it says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Yes. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Now look, reconciliation is a $10 term, big fancy term, and essentially it means making right that which was wrong. Mm -hmm. To reconcile your checkbook, it means you're right. probably added wrong somewhere, or subtracted wrong. You're trying to make right what was out of order. You're correcting it. And we see in our culture today pain, we see old wounds, we see racial division, and as believers, at, at the very least, we should care about the plight of our, yes. of our brothers and sisters who are hurting. If we see brokenness in our community or injustice in our community, we should care deeply, and then we should act on it when we have an opportunity. Right. Yes. 
to work towards reconciliation. Well, and in acting on it, sometimes it doesn't have to, um, sometimes just simply correcting a friend who uses an ethnic slur and, and well, I'm just joking, or, or uh, you, you know how I, you know, th just to be able to say that, that's, that's just not acceptable, uh, you know, just to be able to or understand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and to, to be able to, to, to call folks on that, and, and one of the things that just really flies all over me is when people use the excuse of, well, that's just the way I was raised, you know. Uh, that doesn't work with the, somebody who was raised in an abusive home. That doesn't give them a, 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 a pass to be abusive. Yeah. You know, somebody who's raised in a, in a racial home. But uh, it's learned behavior. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Someone yeah. has to teach that. Oh, absolutely. Too. Yes. You don't, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guys, we're up on a hard break, but when we come back, but I want to ask you, the use of the N-word okay. in the black community. Yeah. Okay. And what your thoughts are on that. Because we're, okay. we know in the white community it's okay. not acceptable. But if you're just tuning in, you're listening to the Commonwealth Matters. I'm Richard Nelson, director of Commonwealth Policy Center. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in just a moment. Hmm. Welcome back to the Commonwealth Matters. I'm Richard Nelson with the Commonwealth Policy Center, here with good friends Buddy Slaughter and Ron Hicks. And we are talking about race cultural appropriation, and a biblical worldview. Buddy, I just threw a bomb out there right before the break. But, you know, one of the things that I noticed that in certain um, black entertainment, I guess, sometimes the, the songs, rap songs in yeah. particular, um, that black people do use the N-word. Not right. all, but some. Right. And, and I'm thinking, well, if, as a white guy, if I would use that term, right. that's not going to go over. Right. I wouldn't think of it. I know it's harmful. Right. It hurts people. So right. I won't use it. But what, what are your thoughts on yeah. that? In the African-American community, uh, the, the use of the N-word is not derogatory. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, black people never enslaved black people. And they didn't use it as a der derogatory term mm -hmm. like slave masters did. It's just like, I know I would never call a person trailer park trash or white trash but i've got some good friends white friends yeah and they they can say it yeah they can say man this guy and they, they can be together this guy man is just trailer park trash and they'll laugh yeah but if i i but i wouldn't say to this guy or i wouldn't say to this man tell that cracker to sit down right but a white so i think i think i think the perception if a white person says it it's going to be perceived as derogatory. Well, because for so many years, that's exactly what it is. And, and then, was. And, and then here it is again. You've got white people saying that black people can't say it. You don't get to do that. That's the that's part of the that's part of the racial dilemma. But let me push back on that. I mean, isn't that a double standard though? I mean, because if a white it, guy, I understand the yeah. intent and I understand that, but it, to, to me, it seems like if the word is off bounds to one group, it should be off bounds to anybody. But but see, tell, tell me more. That, that, well, the conflict is, it's the white person that's deciding. Okay. You're, you're saying, if not you, you per se, but if the white person says it's off limits, here we go back again, you're telling me what I can and can't say. And what right do we have as Caucasians to enter into the black culture and then say to the black culture, here are words that are acceptable okay. to us for you to use towards each other. I mean, that, if, that's not, if that's not the height of... I'm speaking you know where it doesn't belong. Well, I don't and, 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 and that yeah. that's gonna and, and it's not I'm not defending, you know, that word because I, I, I'm not defending that, but I'm just saying part of our culture mm -hmm. cultural difficulty mm -hmm. is if if let's say if a if a if a white person white people come to our church mm -hmm. and uh, some Puerto Ricans and uh, some Hispanics. So we incorporate Hispanic songs into mm -hmm. worship mm -hmm. and we sing white hymnals. We don't Ask them to only sing the songs that we sing, right. and we're and we we're not offended if they bring it up. Right. But it would be offensive if I was to tell them, "You're in a black church, you're gonna sing black songs." Right. That's mm -hmm. the same as saying right. okay. we can't say the N word. You can't say it either. Right. Okay. It's the yeah. same. It's the same premise. Mm -hmm. So, so what mm -hmm. I'm hearing is when understand the culture, understand their context of what they're talking about. What I'm also hearing, though, is uh, getting back to as Christians, uh, we should be sensitive. You, so you have Hispanics and Puerto, Puerto Ricans. Ricans. Uh, you're sensitive to them as they come and worship with you. Yes. You're sensitive to where they are. So is there a biblical principle? Two pastors here. So what biblical passages can we drill down into that would speak Again, to, I think to this? 
by you know be, all things to all people so that by all means you might win some the whole idea of understanding where people come from and to be able to uh, to accommodate that to make them feel comfortable um, not not just in their own skin but to be comfortable in a setting where they um, that they might feel out of their element to be able to go out of your way to be able to sing those songs and to be able to uh, culturally uh, to, to be able to embrace some of the things and um, when I was in the military living overseas and I know buddy you were in the military as well um, uh, I, and I was just talking to a young lady at lunch today about this um, when we lived in Germany we did our best to be able to speak German most Germans spoke English if you tried to speak their language, they're like, okay, okay, stop. You're butchering our language. And let me, you know, but if you just walked in and said, hey, and you're hollering English and just expecting somebody, even if they spoke English, they wouldn't give you the time of day because they realize you're in our country. You're not respecting our culture and that sort of thing. Okay. So when you tried to speak their language, Italy was the same way. You tried to speak their language. They appreciated the fact that you realized I'm in your house. Right. Um, and, and so I'm going to be sensitive to what it is that you're doing. And by the same time, the, so they met you halfway sort of a thing. You know, the whole dirty American, the whole loud American thing is when we come in and we expect the whole world to do it our way. Yeah. That same sort of thing happens, I think, in, in, in churches. And that's the very model that Christ goes against mm -hmm. because he's yeah. walking down the road. Yeah. Uh, Zacchaeus mm -hmm. sees him, mm -hmm. and he runs up in the tree. Now, he's a, a chief tax collector, which mm -hmm. means he's in charge of people. Yeah. He's robbing other people. Right. Yeah. And so <laughs> and Jesus said, hey, to the yeah. Jewish people. he says, come down. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to eat at your house today. Yeah. Now, the Pharisees are like, man, this guy's eating with tax collectors mm -hmm. and sinners. Mm -hmm. Christ was constantly showing his disciples, guys, look, that's not how you do it. Mm -hmm. When he was with the Pharisee, when he was in the area of, of uh, the Sea of Galilee, the Pharisees were around. They were constantly busting his yes, chops. Yeah. So he leaves and goes to the area of Tyre and Sidon on purpose. Yeah. And immediately when he places himself in Tyre, the lame, the halt, they came to him mm -hmm. and he healed them. He fed them. And then he goes on down a little deeper. Uh, in the Sidon, and then this Canaanite woman comes. Mm -hmm. she, they were the enemies ever yes. since Exodus. They were mm -hmm. enemies. And what does he do? He says, hey, uh, your, daughter's, your daughter's healed. And then in chapter 16, Matthew, as soon as he goes back across the Sea of Galilee, the Pharisees are like, give us a sign. Right. Yeah. So yeah. he was constantly showing mm -hmm. his disciples, guys, look, so, this, is, this is the model. Yeah. yeah. You have to go where these outcast on. Mm -hmm. so, so buddy one of the things that jesus made clear was that he came to save and seek the lost of all nations tongues mm -hmm. tri tribes everybody every yeah. ethnicity yes. Yes. He, he cut through the, the what the jewish mindset was that we were looking for messiah just for our nation no jesus stepped right. outside and he had the conversation with the woman at the well the yes. samaritan woman he went into foreign areas where people that were <clears throat> in, in pagan uh cultures yes. were and he healed them Yes. He he was outside the church establishment. Out, the Pharisees were angered by him constantly because of him eating with tax collectors, yes. eating with Zacchaeus. But taking so, it a step further, like you said, he, he came to seek and to save that which was lost before he ascended into heaven. He said to the disciples, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. So he came to seek and to save from every tribe and every nation. And then he's given that commandment to, to the blood of born again. And he, and he took those apostles, he took those disciples for six to eight months into the regions that the and if you notice in Matthew chapter 15 they never follow him right they follow him all around Jerusalem mm -hmm. all through Galilee but once he goes into Tyre and Sidon they don't go they're not gonna they're not gonna go there. so buddy let me let me go push on that a little bit so as Christians who care about our communities and care about brokenness and the pain let's say minority communities is that Tyre and Sidon for a Christian let's say in a white church if you will for them to get out of their comfort zone and go into the inner city to minister? Yes. Is that a, yes. So how does that look? I want to hear from you. How would that look like? What would be appropriate outreach for a white guy like me that has a heart for racial rec reconciliation? What, what would be helpful? I, what would I, be good? I'll tell you, there, there's some white churches that we've partnered with. Ron's is one of them. But there's a couple of white churches that we partner with right now. And what they've done, we get some of our members. They get they bring some of the, uh, their members we will either go to a neighborhood that their church ministers to, and they will come to our church, and we'll break up into groups of three or four, and we'll just go door to door, praying for people. I mean, just in the projects. I mean, just, and we'll go to neighborhoods that they minister to, swap a route, and do the same thing. Because at the same time, 
we have a responsibility to minister to all men. So multiracial yeah. missions, Ron. I'm gonna I'm gonna pivot hard pivot to back to to mascots. Okay. Is it racist? You're Native American. You got Native American blood. Yes. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, Chicago Blackhawks hockey team, mm -hmm. Atlanta Braves. Mm -hmm. Is it racist to have those mascots? Well, let me ask you this. First question would be, why name all those mascots after Native Americans? I mean, what was the point of that? My thinking is that there's some level of pride. They they had some virtues, some things that they esteemed. The, the Native Americans were known as good fighters. The, mm -hmm. the Braves, right? Kansas mm -hmm. City Chiefs, they were warriors, <laughs> right? But do you have a mascot that you intend to be to put down or to be negative or to... Uh, you know, but, somehow uh, be, somehow question. had to be made fun right. of. Let me answer the question. Do, do you know why in all of the movies and, and uh, uh, the portrayal of the Native Americans, they would always put their hand over the mouth and go, whoa, 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 whoa. you know why? They, Native Americans didn't do that. Right. Right. Very similar to uh, African culture, the, uh, when we were in uh, uh, Tanzania, the African women, the way they would say amen with, they would, with their tongues, they go, oh, la, 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 la. Yeah. right? And that yeah. was the... Well, the Native Americans would make that similar sound, you know, but the, but the Caucasians couldn't do that. So they would oh, 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 yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and so so it, it was a, a, a kind of a, a mocking sort of thing. Look at the Atlanta Braves mascot. It's a it's a caricature, a great big nose, mm -hmm. um, a Native American. And and I, in my opinion, looking at that, I'm thinking, where is the. How is that elevating and celebrating and saying this is somebody that I, I so no, I don't see and, that and as this any is, sort of a and this is fascinating. I'm a Braves fan, they were in Milwaukee, my mm -hmm. home state of Wisconsin mm -hmm. had the Milwaukee Braves, Hank Aaron played, mm -hmm. the, you know, mm -hmm. Eddie Matthews and Warren Hammer Spahn. Hank, yeah. But um, I didn't see that. And this is interesting. I'm glad mm -hmm. we're having this conversation. We got just a minute to kind of wrap it up, mm -hmm. but you see it differently than I do. Yes. now I'm a little more sensitive to that. Now How you see now yeah. because I care mm -hmm. about you. Yeah, yeah. And and then I've got the whole we've got the whole and question me, of cultural look, appropriation and whether is it a cultural appropriation or are we just denying part of our American history because Indians, Native Americans are part of our history here. Sure. Sure. So So I, how about this? How about yeah. if we teach mm -hmm. instead of playing base instead of giving baseball teams um, Native American names, how about if we teach baseball players how to play the traditional Native American sports? And how, how about I mean then you know or or from the beginning how about you just have conversations with people to be able to say is this acceptable for us to be able to do this would you mind if if we do this yeah um, no I think that it'd be it'd be good because by the way one of the reasons why the Cleveland Indians changed their mascot name was it goes back to early on when uh, they would visit opposing teams and be at opposing fields the fans would mock. The Indians. They would do things like you had mentioned. They would do, mm -hmm. you know, mock the yes. Indians. So the, yeah. that was one reason why mm -hmm. they thought about changing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, cultural appropriation, we really didn't get into that a whole lot as much as I wanted. I think, guys, we, we are out of time. I wish we had more time to talk about it. Maybe we'll need to do another program yeah. on this. Yeah. So. Awesome. I think the key is what you said. You care about me. I care about you guys. Yeah. If we truly, if we love the Lord and we love each other, yeah. then we should be concerned about yeah, what makes you upset should upset me. What you celebrate, right. I should be able to celebrate with you. That's good. All right, guys, God bless. Good God to bless have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you, listeners. God bless you all. God blesses everyone.